If your father was half as good as you, he would not have... Owen didn't snatch back his cigarette, but just crossed his arms and sighed at the sky. Aiden raised his eyebrows and took the opportunity to finally ask the question, What happened between you two? Owen shook his head and was silent. Aiden was a little anxious. He knelt face to face with Owen and was very serious. Grandfather, what can't you tell me? What problem can't I solve for you? You know me, I can do anything. Aiden has always been surprised by one thing. If Owen was really angry about the business problems of the Midnight Snack Corner, he should have gotten over it now that the Midnight Snack Corner had become so successful. But the fact was that there still seemed to be an invisible gap between Owen and Morris showed that there was more at play. There was a force dividing them that extended far beyond the restaurant. But no matter whether Aiden asked his father or his grandfather, no one was willing to say what had caused such a gap. Aiden was not willing to use his mind-reading ability on his family members, but either way, he was quite upset. Owen looked at Aiden's noble face, and a touch of joy flashed in his eyes. He patted Aiden on the shoulder, shook his head, and said, You're excellent. Probably the best Dale to come out of our family in a century or more. Unfortunately, there are some things in this world that you can't understand, and some things you could do nothing about. I think... Owen looked at the sky again and his eyes gradually became dim, as if he was recalling something. I think that's what we call providence. Grandfather. Aiden wanted to continue to ask questions, but he saw River running in from the next yard. As she ran, she waved excitedly. Dad, Aiden, I just received a call from my sister. She's bringing her husband here for Easter this year. Both of them were stunned, clearly not expecting this news. River's older sister was named Charlotte. Charlotte was Owen's daughter, Morris's sister and Aiden's aunt. She was about 10 years younger than Morris. That year, she should have been nearly 30. Five years before, after graduating from university, she never even applied for a job. Instead, she announced that she would marry a businessman named Holden Guilford in the nearby city of Hampton. If the wedding had been to a general businessman, it would have been okay. But after a lot of inquiries from Owen and Morris, it turned out that Holden's track record was very bad. He was a famous cheat and con man from the Hampton area. Therefore, Owen and Morris were both against the marriage. But Charlotte had a steely heart, disregarded her father and older brother's opposition, and left home, marrying Holden soon after. After that, she stopped contacting either man, and the two men did the same to her. Later, they heard through the grapevine that Holden had engaged in some kind of international trade deal and made a small fortune and now Charlotte intended to mend the relationship with their family, so she planned to take Holden back to Langley to meet everyone. However, Holden was a spiteful man. He always resented that the family did not agree to his marriage with Charlotte, and he consistently refused to return to the Dale home. As a result, the connection between the Dale family and Charlotte was almost broken. This marked the first time for Charlotte to come home since she had gotten married five years ago, which was really surprising. And now... A blue SUV stopped in front of the Dale house. Three people and a dog emerged from the SUV. The first of the three was a middle-aged man stepping from the driver's seat. He was dressed like a gentleman, in a blazer, with brown leather boots and a walking stick, which was just as likely to be decorative as it was to be of use to him. It made him look old-timey and out of place. He had a hanging beer gut and a long face with a beard. His eyes were full of scorn. Seems like your family is still as poor as they were five years ago. Hearing the man's words, a middle-aged woman who had just gotten out of the back seat frowned silently. Her face was thin, her skin was pale, and her frown seemed to be wearied. She was obviously less than 30 years old, but it looked like she could have been about 40. She held the little boy's hand. The little boy was holding a stuffed tiger and rubbing his eyes. The boy was about 4 years old and had a round face with a pair of black, gem-like eyes. He also heard the man's words and was confused. Daddy, what's poor? The man touched the boy's head and said with a strange smile, Poor people are people who don't have money. They live in dirt and filth. They're not from the same world as us. Don't play with them, do you hear me? The boy nodded, happily playing with the dog, a mid-sized German shepherd named Pinecone. The dog was gentle as it yapped around the boy's legs, but its eyes were full of vigilance and mania. Suddenly, the dog barked fiercely. The family of three looked around and saw that the courtyard gate was open. In a line, the Dale family slowly walked out. Dad, 
Morris, Clara, River, and... Were you Aiden and Amy? You're both so big. The woman, who was clearly Charlotte, said hello to them one by one. The man, by the power of deduction, was Aiden's uncle, Holden. As for the little boy, seeing the curious eyes of the people, Charlotte said to everyone, This is our son, Rylan. Little tiger, come and say hello to them. But Rylan suddenly hid behind Holden and looked at his family with distrust. Mommy, Daddy said that we can't play with the poor. When Rylan said this, everyone's mood changed in an instant. Charlotte was the most furious. They're not poor people, they're your relatives. Rylan raised his head in confusion, his face puzzled. Holden's face twisted into an unnatural smile. Hey, Char, let's not scare the little tiger. If he doesn't want to say hello, don't force him. All throughout this, the dog wouldn't stop jumping and barking. River was frightened by the barking dog. Her face turned pale and her eyes were full of fear. She subconsciously hid behind Aiden. It's so noisy. Aiden glanced at Pinecone. Shut up, he hissed at it, triggering master level prestige and imposing spiritual oppression on the target. Holden smiled. My German Shepherd is a pure-blood shepherd dog, and his temper is stronger than anyone else. No one can quiet him but me. Before he even finished his sentence, he saw that the German Shepherd seemed to be frightened, and he lay on the ground with a quiet whimper. He began panting and wagging his tail at Aiden. 